A box has been delivered. What could it possibly be? Right, let's get this cut open and see what it is. I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. And uh, it's only taken. Um, not sure. It might have just taken two weeks to come from the supplier. I was quite surprised. He actually turned up. It has been repacked in a used box. I don't mind that because it's recycling, repurposing, which is brilliant. Look at that. Very well packaged. Very well packaged indeed. A sponge foam rubber. Now the reason I'm doing the unboxing like this is simply because if there's anything wrong with it, then there's going to be no dispute. Very well packaged, very well packaged indeed. Just check the box that there's nothing else in there. little screws just here And another little one right down here that's in, actually in the, in between the plastic. So I've got no more.
Right, I'm going to get one of these. of packing foam out. And flip that over. That looks really, really good. 45 kg servo. Servo plug. More silica. So they need to be bolted on. Don't know what these are for. I'm going to have to have a good check round to make sure that it's all there. Now this small black thing that I found in the packaging. Don't know if we can see that, but that looks like it's a small. M1.5 screw that looks like it's broken off so we're going to have a good look around for that so this is Nuxian which is Fury Bear Fury Bear there we go, focus Fury Bear Fury Bear, should I say? Um, and we have some instruction leaflets as to where everything goes. Instructions. Let's see what what else we have wrapped in plastic. more plastic Quite a bit of wiring. Because it does have a light kit. My goodness, look at the size of those. They are tiny. Yellow lights, wow, red with resistors, white with resistors, oh. this is going, look at this, this is a rear light, little control board for whatever. And I'm assuming that these are light lenses, light holders and lenses. Um, wow. This is going to take me a little time. So, top side view. Um, you're going to come through this with me. So you can see what I see. As we find it so all in all overall appearance straight out the box looks quite good um, 
lots of uh, little nuts and bolts in the wheels and the mud guards are made of plastic the fixings are metal and it all seems um, quite secure and it has traveled um, halfway around the world um, this gap here might seem a little bit more than the gap at the front um, because there's not a truck under it yet I've noticed that these are little um, anchor tie downs let's just zoom in a little bit on those so these can pull up for chaining chaining down um, we've got some square recesses in the top uh, just here next to it just behind them which uh, you know I'm assuming are for uh, posts the overall uh, fit and finish laser cut wood uh, metal uh, bed rails um, a little bit of checker plating at the front there very shiny um, so all in all um, I thought at first glance just bring you back a little bit um, six axles I thought but well on the original trailers that I saw 15 years ago the first two axles were fixed and the steering axles were the last four this one I knew that this wheel turned with the truck and this one went opposite so it swung outwards and I thought that these two were fixed so we still had four steering axles but I was wrong. If I manually do this, this one also turns. This front one also turns, which I uh, quite impressed with actually. And that is all controlled with a 45 kilo servo. Just in there. And it's branded Nuxian or Nuxian, an NX4016, which can take anything between 5 and 8.4 volts which is handy to know and a little uh, locker just here just, I would imagine just for decoration um, but yeah I've not seen any missing screws just yet so I will be going through it with a fine tooth comb um, now I thought that that looked like from here where there's a join I thought that was leaning off and it's not because I've looked down the length of the trailer with my eye right at the end here and that is absolutely flat as um, the uh, salt flat in Utah I think it's Utah I have also noticed that right on the very front we have a little bit of damage now I'm not going to be shouting at the supplier because of course they can send it in perfect condition and then um, the couriers in this case was uh, UPS um, might not be handling it as well as what we could so that's going to need a little bit of work um, doing on it just to get that right 
because I did notice on the box that at the front where this were it does look like it's had a bit of a bump and uh, I'm not going to be jumping up and down too much about that it's something that I can deal with and then quite frankly once it's uh, once it's all screwed together I don't think you're going to notice too much I think this is uh, slightly bent as well so uh, yeah I'm going to uh, have a look underneath it now I can hear and that's probably me having it no I'm not going to say anything, I'm not going to bad mouth anything until I've had a good look around it. So, underneath, let's bring it to the edge. And uh, we can see um, they're actually metal cross members. I think these um brackets here are for uh, the lights just here and, and uh, up here this is the turntable that fits into the throat of the fifth wheel and then turns and operates the servo and the suspension let's bring you up a little bit so you get a better angle of this and it looks to have um like a leaf spring suspension a, a damper um nine locks on the u-bolt that looks like a three leaf a three leaf spring tires we have are branded Michelin they're really quite uh, good actually very freewheeling as well and they're all the same absolutely no resistance on them at all so yeah i am impressed up to now of course there's alloy wheels uh four times it's 24 alloy wheels and we can see in here the steering mechanism which these are non-adjustable rods they're just straight tie rods so there should be no adjustment really needed in any of those and they are incremented which means the uh, front ones don't turn as much as the rear ones so that's how that goes so it's five steering axles Yeah, pretty good. Now I've noticed some discoloration over there on that axle. I have no idea what that is. Oh, that's probably one of those um, lime silica packs that's burst. Um, so let's have a look and see if one of them has burst doesn't look doesn't look like one of them's burst but it could possibly be from another um, 
another packet in there warehouse or something so yeah the suspension looks pretty good the turntables are um, bearings a bearing race I love to see the um, moulding marks on the tyres just shows that they are brand new running very true as well no wobble on them so yeah that's uh, still haven't found any loose nuts and bolts and I haven't seen anywhere where we put a power source for uh, the batteries on the servo. Let's bring you out. Now we're upside down. We have a little spare wheel compartment. So it's got 25 wheels actually. That's pretty impression. impressive. The legs, I'm assuming, are going to be electrically controlled and I'm wondering if the locker on the other side that looks like a fire extinguisher locker I'm wondering whether or not that that might be the little compartment that has a toggle switch I'm just having a look and see what's what look at the size of those they are absolutely tiny Wow, but um, reversing lights, actual fog lights. This is going to take quite a bit of uh, figuring out. But my first impression is, yeah, I'm really uh, happy with that. So I'm going to um, give it a good going over and oh yeah see what's what right i've taken one of the wheels off because i wanted to see what it was uh, like plus two of the bolts that are found in the packaging were missing from this wheel and they will be replaced in there um i have noticed on these uh, tires that the writing is more prominent on one side that side not so much but the other side is quite prominent so I'm going to go through all the other wheels and see if I can't get um, this to look more prominent I might put some tire shine on there because on the side that is more prominent you've got these um, marks that go across the tire which I'm not really um, that keen on if you can see that it's part of the molding process I guess uh, but on this side we don't have those um, lines that segment the, the, the tire so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some um, tire shine on those and uh, see how they come up. Um, the hub, they're not glued on. The wheels are not glued onto the uh, tires at all. And there's no inserts in these. Um, but they are really, really quite thick and chunky they really don't need uh, much uh, assistance on that so um, yeah all the wheels are identical there's no inner or outer that I can see 
and they just fit back to back over the hub now you can take the wheels off by removing the 10 um, 10 uh, wheel nuts lug nuts um, or you can just spin off the um, what is it six mil 5.5 millimeter uh, nut that goes on there like that let me just take that off because I can show you but it has like a brake dust cover and um, that is the setup they really are quite stiff <laughs> but it is a heavy trailer so um, what I'm going to do is I might go through all of these because there's no thread lock and that screws on there I shall um, put some thread lock on there so you've got a choice of either leaving um, the brake drums on um, and these small bolts 1.5 millimeter and you can buy M1 um, thread or M1.5 thread and put actual wheel nuts on but I don't know so I'm going to put the outer edge yeah I'll keep saying that I'm overall I'm impressed with the quality of this Fury Bear product I keep mentioning them but I'm certainly not getting any kind of support from them um, no sponsorship I paid for this out of my own money I'm a big fan of if you get a good service leave a good review that might help other people out so I can now put those on um, one at a time and then line them up um, or just assemble it on the desk like that and then put that on the little nylock nut after I've thread locked that on and then this centre cap just spins on there um, I'm not going to tighten those up there's no key to tighten those up but what I've done in the past I've used clear nail polish um, just to put them on and it, it, it doesn't just put them on finger tight and it doesn't create a thread lock but it does cause resistance so it doesn't naturally unscrew but yeah it's, just, um, it's all very well engineered and metal shielded bearings pretty yeah uh, pretty good so um, I'm gonna screw that back together and uh, put it back on so here we are um, it, first of all continuity is going to be really rubbish um, on the last couple of videos and on the next couple of videos because I've had problems I thought it was with the camera it's not with the camera it's with the memory card um, being written to so many times it's just ridiculous but as you can see here I've taken off the rear axle um, because the more I was looking at it the the quality of this is really good 
the way it's put together, not quite so good as you would expect on a um, 2000 euro trailer. I have seen these on British websites for £2,000, just over. Um, I got mine from a different source, so we don't, you know, I didn't buy, I didn't pay that much for it. I got it for considerably less. So the wheels are assembled with the hub and the bearings in there. And um, I've put their moulding marks um, to the inners, to, to, to both of the inners. So we get the, the, the very good detailing, Michelin um, energy tyres. So they're all um, screwed together and then they just fit on. Um, there. Now I've noticed with this, this is why I've taken them apart, is because there is what I can see a fear of tightening anything up because I noticed that on the rear axle when I was uh, wiring it up I thought I'd remove the rear axle because it was going to be easier for me to get to. You'll see that in a future video. And I noticed that the shock absorbers were loose, which you'll see on the next video. Um, so basically, I've stripped it down because the way that they built, I think the, they need to be built a hell of a lot better. Because I felt on the rear axle that this and this felt different. And then... Because it was loose, obviously I've taken them off. Um, taken them off from here, completely stripped them down. And I found that they had um, spacers in the bottom. These little things. And um, which put a preload on the dampers. And this, this side was a lot heavier than this and one of them had this in um so i've left them out because the the piston here um they're not oil filled they are just springs in here um and then this um top section just here had um threads probably a quarter of an inch down and the springs protruded up so screwing that on it was already preloaded on the spring and i always thought this is really quite um stiff and there's 12 of them holding the trailer up and it's not really going to carry any great weight so I decided to take them out. If I have problems with that, then I will obviously disassemble and put them back in as a bit of preload. Now I also noticed, because I've done them all, and I'll show you in the next video, that two axles had one missing. They weren't missing out of the same axle. They was missing out of two separate axles one on the left and one on the right and luckily i have more now one of these shock absorbers had blue grease in it just to just to help it slightly um they're not the most precise if you it's quite rough but if you just press them down straight they sound okay so i've put some um synthetic grease inside there with the spring and nothing nothing rattles because like i say these two caps they do preload the spring by about 
an eighth of an inch, two or three millimetres. And so it's going to be supported. So um, I'm going to carry on with the wiring and I will be doing everything again. Completely disassembling and putting thread lock on everything because I don't know whether it's come loose or whether they have some kind of fear of tightening screws up because they know how good a quality the um, metal is. I'm not going to say anything bad, but that's it. The next time you see this trailer will be when I'm wiring it up. And that's going to be quite special because the wire that's hanging out of the front of the trailer was for a servo power source. So they could have the... Um, steering working now the steering works i'll just briefly explain if i can't find yes yeah, so with the fifth wheel um this is where it goes the, the the power source comes from this because this wedge fits inside of the fifth wheel and which operates the servo um just to excuse all this because the continuity is going to be way off. The screws are missing because I've had this off. Because I'm working on the wiring. Um, but the other parts of the video were corrupted. Now this is the fifth wheel for the MFC. Which as you saw in the, 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 the cab uh, video. That um, I swapped the MFC fifth wheel. This is the kingpin that comes with this trailer. So as you can see, there is a huge difference in the height of those. So I'll just bring you down here. Hopefully you can see there's a big difference in height and that's because the it doesn't fit the Tamiya fifth wheel, it was too short, but I had one of these um, Tamiya fifth wheels, or kingpin rather, um, in my spares box. And um, I noticed that when this goes in and clicks in, that is supposed to operate um this which here just unhook that that when the fifth wheel slides this moves a sensor inside here which then in turn operates the server uh, so this has kind of a sensor inside that operates from a magnet so obviously that needs to be quite um, precise and the MFC fifth wheel has quite a lot of play because the throat of the fifth wheel is bigger on the uh, fifth wheel for the MFC as you can see there that is um, the MFC fifth wheel and we can tell that by having this and this one is a stock fifth wheel and as you can see that is quite a bit um, wider so I've updated, as you've seen on the, the past video, that when that fits in there, that actually fits quite snug. And there's no mechanism in here, but that will be uh, quite snug. And that will move and turn much better than... Um, 
a vehicle that's fitted with an MFC fifth wheel. Now I'm wondering if I could um, get something that would fit over there like a, a piece of um, clear film that's folded down with a couple of um, spacers in there to take out uh, that slack and that's basically um, not compatible with a multifunction fifth wheel and that one fits much better so yeah that's uh, it's not quite as easy as ordering something um, and it works because quite clearly straight away it needed a new kingpin whether a Lisu or scale art fifth wheel would be thinner thus having uh, no need to replace that but if you've got a Tamiya um, stock fifth wheel whether it's the MFC version or um, the, the stock version you're going to need to swap that pin king pin so yeah not quite as straightforward as uh, we'd like but I'm going to carry on I'm going to do a few more videos I've got a new memory card nothing should screw up nothing should get corrupted and hopefully I'll take you through um, my wiring because my wiring has had a lot of um, too much away but yeah a lot of uh, wire identifications etc um, doing some working out just jotting noting this is my notepad so yeah that's gonna be um, pretty much it for this video so if you have um, any questions give them a uh, comment send me an email everything's in the description um like the video it helps me um helps the channel grow etc you know the story and uh, hopefully i'll not have too many adverts in these next uploads so again um everyone thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you in the next one when i'm wiring it up bye for now